liberating culture. That's what we do in China, every major sector and city in the world. And it's exciting because are we, we're seeing this not only as leaders grow in self-awareness, are they able to change the culture of their businesses, but more importantly, going back to the first tool on the other side, they're able to change how they lead themselves and how they change their families. What's often the case for us is we focus on emotional intelligence, self-awareness, and the ability to connect with people. We're always asking the question, what is it like to be on the other side of you? Isn't that a great question? And what is it like to be on the other side of you? We talk about self-awareness being a painful gift. And so what we realize is when leaders become self-aware of how they're leading in their team and the organization, the same tendencies that undermine them in their workplace, pretty soon they realize those are the same tendencies that are undermining them in their marriages. They're the same tendencies that are undermining them in their relationships with their sons and their daughters and with their parents. And so what we want to do is help leaders grow, be healthy, calibrate support and challenge in all of their relationships, and bring grace and truth. And how you bring support to some individuals is differently from how you bring it to others. I mean, Tom mentioned my ability to bring challenge to Tom is one of those guys that says, just hit me with it. Just tell me what, tell me what I need to hear. Uh, that's, a, that's exceptional. I mean, me, I enjoy hitting. And so that's a fantastic opportunity to say, well, this is probably what you need to hear that you don't want to hear and you can it. Well, how I bring challenge to Tom is completely different from how I bring challenge to my wife, April, of 21 years. That method will not work. I've learned that she will come back. And so how I bring support and challenge, not only am I learning how to do that as I lead myself to lead others, but how do I do it differently based on different personalities? And so this has been a huge uh, place of liberation for me personally. And it's exciting to see what God is doing with it as we bring it to the workplace and the ministries. So if I were to bottom line this and say, what are we talking about here? Uh, you know, in Sunday school class, if, if the teacher asks what's brown, has a furry tail, and climbs trees and eat, eats nuts, what's the right answer? Jesus, right? That's, that's the right answer always in, in Sunday school. But it actually is the right answer today. John 1.14, it's on, it's on your hand out there. John 1.14 talks about how Jesus came from the Father full of grace and truth. That's the gospel, friends. When, when grace and truth come together, you have Jesus. That's where Jesus is. And as we can receive both grace and truth, and as we can learn to calibrate grace and truth in the lives of others, we actually bring the presence of Jesus to our jobs, to our families, to our neighbors, any of those circles of influence, we bring the gospel as we do that. So there's three questions. First question is, am I willing to start with myself? Am I willing to go first? Am I willing to look in the mirror and, and ask honestly the question, do I have a life worth following? Like, can I say like Paul, follow my example? Not that it's perfect, not that, it's, that that's not what we're talking about at all, but can you follow my journey and my example as I follow Christ? The second question that Todd has shared with us here is, is, is what do I need to calibrate more of, grace or truth in my life? Like Todd, I can bring challenge, I struggle bringing grace, and the Holy Spirit <laughs> has been working with me for a lot of years to bring more grace. You know how you learn to bring grace? When you're at a point in your life where you need to receive grace. When you're that person who's screwed up, when you're that person whose marriage is falling apart, when you're that person whose teenage children are rebelling and are experimenting with drugs, and on the things that I've gone through the last 10 years, you realize, I desperately need grace. And then you run into someone else, and, and then, then you say, they need it as well, and I want to be able to kind of share that with them. Now, the third question is, what is your next best step? And I forgot to do something. Sorry, Wally. I want to introduce my family uh, to you real quick here. So here's the um, here's the five of us. It's, it's taken on here, Paulie's Paulie's Island, and a couple things that stand out as I look at my kids here. Uh, the first thing is I look at those beautiful smiles. You know, I don't know, I'm just getting older, I'm softy, or whatever it is, I'm 50 now, so maybe I'm just getting becoming a softy, but I look at those beautiful smiles and I think of $20,000 in orthodontics. That's the first thing that I think of, so I, then I encourage myself beyond that. 
Uh, the second thing I think about is I'm so glad we have one child that can reach the top cover in the kitchen now because it's embarrassing for me to pull that chair out to reach that top cover. cover. We have one tall kid in the family. Uh, the third thing that I think of when I, when I look at this picture is I have three kids in college right now. I, I don't recommend that. Uh, all three of them are in college. One is at Walford, my son. I've got a daughter down at West Palm Beach, uh, at Palm Beach Atlantic University, and another daughter up in Michigan, uh, finishing up. So I know, Jane, we don't normally do this, but we're going to take up an offering right now. And be generous, please, because I've got big bills now. But uh, I look at my family, and I think about what we went through as parents over the last six years, seven years maybe. And, uh, you know, the old joke is parents of teenagers know why some animals eat their young. And uh, if you have teenage children, you might get that joke. Uh, and, and we went through a lot of heartache with our kids. A lot of heartache with our kids over the last six or seven years. But what Todd just shared about grace and truth bringing transformation, I have watched my children walk that journey. And you know what they were struggling? But they were struggling with both, with, with grace and truth. But oftentimes, it's easy to see the truth in someone else's life. I can see what my wife's problems are, what my children's problems are. It's much more difficult to take ownership and receive the truth in your own life. And that's the journey my kids have been on. And by God's grace, they're making that journey. And I'm making that journey by God's grace. So what is your next step? Really, there's a couple of options here. It's on the, it's on the back. Just some, just some challenges we want to leave, leave you with and, and, and an offer we want to make to you today. Uh, the first challenge is, would love to know if, if anyone in the room, it'd be great if four or five of you got back to me, my information's on there, to say, Tom, here's what I did. In terms of the circles, here's the circle that I'm going to be more intentional about. I'd love to be able to pray for you. I'd love to be able to be your cheerleader on that. So would Todd just encourage you as you go from accidental to intentional with your influence in, in, your, in your world. So that's one next step that you can do. The other one's a little, a little harder. The other one is to say, okay, um, I've got this support challenge matrix here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a conversation with someone this week, and I'm going I'm to seek feedback. I'm going to say to my wife, possibly, or to people that, that, that I work for, people that I work with, hey, where do you see me right now with support and challenge? In other words, what do I need to work on? Do I need to bring some more support? Do I need to be willing to, to, to give more grace? Or do I need to be a little a little more courageous and bring more challenge and speak truth. See, truth, truth is hard to receive sometimes, but it will liberate you, right? We know that. Jesus said, if you receive, if you receive the truth, the truth will what? It will set you free. Freedom is on the other side of, of receiving truth. That, that's the promise that he makes. It's hard, it's humbling, uh, it's, it's, it's painful at times to go through that process, but that's the promise. So I, I, I shared this with my wife uh, several months ago. I said, honey, where would you put me right now in terms of where I'm at and with support and challenge? Where would you put an X for me right now? And I stood there and waited for a pat on the back because I thought I'd been doing a really good job. You know? I thought, oh, liberation all the way. You know, she, this, is, you know, this is just a perfect setup. And she said, you know, generally you've been moving more towards liberation, but lately, dominator. And she put me right down there in the red. <laughs> and it was a kind of a wake-up call for me. And we had a great conversation about that as to, I, I needed her feedback. You see, we all have broccoli in our teeth. I, maybe, not this, maybe not this moment, hopefully, but we all have broccoli in our teeth. We can't see it, but everyone else can. Right? You've been there before at a dinner party, you go to go use the restroom. Why didn't somebody tell me about this? Well, are we approachable? Are we seeking out that kind of feedback? That's the second challenge. And if you want to take one of those challenges, get back with me, let it know how it goes, let us know how we can pray and support you. Uh, then we, the offer we have that we want to make back to you to help you and your team, we have a, a Team 360 assessment that is really, really good. And it's going to help you take a snapshot of where is my team right now in terms of our communication, in terms of our relationships, our capacity, our execution, our organizational clarity. It's a great tool. There's a consultation that goes along with that. It would take about an hour or so to walk through that. The online assessment is, is anonymous. It's just some links that you send out to your, to your employers or to your team. It could be a church team. We do this with all kinds of teams. 
And if that would be if that would be a way we could fight for your highest good, we want to do that. There's a very nominal fee that goes along with that. I think Todd, I think we reduced it by over two thirds to one hundred and fifty dollars uh, for the consultation. So if that's if that's something that we could do to serve you, we want to we want to do that. And I guess I would end today. I guess I would end today with with, with just this thought. You know, when 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 we when we ask ourselves, and we got a picture here of that, but let's go with the last the last picture if we can of Wally. I love this picture. All of us need somebody that's that's reaching that that's reaching up, right? We all need to be this person. We all need to be a liberator in the life of somebody. Who is this for you today? Who's this person that's struggling? What circle of influence are they in? What's it going to take for you to give them a hand and pull them up to that next level? I love that. Isn't that a great? Isn't that a great image? But we also need somebody. We're also we're also her as well. We need somebody in our life as well, don't we? That's going to, that's going to fight for us. Todd is a person like that for me. He fights for me. I'm a better leader and a better person today because he brings grace and truth into my life. Do you have somebody like that in your life? Seek out that person. Take him out to lunch. Take him out to practice. Buy him coffee. Figure out a way to spend some time with them. Timothy, uh, Paul talks in Timothy, in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, he says this. He said, the things you have heard and seen in me, Timothy, entrust to reliable people who are able to teach others. You know that little verse, you know what that little verse is talking about? Multiplication. You've got Paul, who's investing in Timothy, who's investing in faithful people, who are investing in others. Four generations of multiplication. We all are in that process. Who is your Paul? Who is your Timothy? And, and what is your next best step? I'd just like to pray for us before I wrap up. God, thank you for this group. Thank you, Father, for the mission of the Christian Chamber. And Lord, I pray for empowerment. I pray for liberation. I pray, Father, that all of us, including myself, can start with me and, 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 and hear the voice of the Spirit to know what my next step is as I follow Jesus. God, help us, Lord, uh, to receive your grace and truth, but also to dispense it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Tom and Todd. That was inspirational. And you know, I was thinking, I may not need to put that matrix in front of my wife. <laughs> but no, this was really good. There was a, one thing he said. He said, the willingness to fight for those you lead. That was a, a lot of key things he said. Also, what is it like to be on the other side of me as a leader? So just so many great points and so many great things to take away, and I appreciate that. Um, we just have a little bit of time left before we go, and I actually want to give you about five minutes uh, to have some fellowship around the table. I have two questions for you uh, that I want you to attempt to ask. You find someone at your table. Uh, I want you to ask them, do you think that a city can be transformed for Jesus Christ? Why or why not? The second question what would your workplace or city look like if they were to be transformed by Jesus Christ? I want you to try to think of three things to answer to that. So find you someone right now. we got about five minutes, and then I'll close it up. Mm -hmm.